G'day Jaffa Adventures, Terry King here. Welcome to the channel. Check this out. Driver's side headlight, nice and illuminated. Passenger side headlight, dead. If I flick on the high beams, driver's side, looking good. Passenger side high beam works, but the low beam is still out. Now a long time ago, I replaced the halogen bulbs with HIDs. So obviously I've got a burnt out HID on this passenger side, be it the bulb or be it the ballast. Now I could simply replace that with an HID, or I could replace it with one of these. You want to see what a one of these is? Stick around. Now if you're a regular viewer to this channel, you certainly know that I just can't keep this vehicle stock. I'm constantly doing little modifications here and there. And of course, there's a ton of maintenance videos on the playlist as well. However, this time I'm going to be replacing a burnt out headlight globe with this. Have a look at that for a sexy bit of kit. Three LEDs and one giant indicator. Now I did notice a couple of other things in the box. What do we got? Oh, we got a wiring harness, sweet. And we got a user manual, Land Cruiser headlight assembly. Now, unfortunately, that is all in Chinese, so that's not going to be too much help. However, flip it over on the other side, and there we go. We've got some English. This is what I'm particularly interested in, the pin locations. Because if I have to repin this sucker, I need something like that. Ooh, this is exciting. Let's go install some new toys. Now, before I go ahead and rip the front end apart, take these headlights out and put the new ones in. I'm actually just gonna set these lights on top of the old ones and I'm gonna wire them in because I'd hate to get this whole thing installed, plug it in and find out that it doesn't work. Let's find out that it works first. Now they give you these little pigtails. That end is the Toyota plug end. That end is the new light end. So one plug simply pops on there and this big plug simply pops on there. And then these ends wire up to your car. I don't know about that little guy there though. I'll have to do a wait and see on him. Okay, the first thing I gotta do is take this cover off. And I'm sure most of you guys know how to do this, but if you haven't done it before, these little clips have a push button. You push the little button in the center and that allows you to take the clip out. And then when you put them back in, you just gotta bring that button into its proud position, slip that through the hole, and then push the button down so that it's flush with the rest of the clip. There's seven of these clips across this panel. And then the panel just lifts out like so. Now looking at the back of these headlights, we've got one, two, three, four. Four spots where they bolt into. So on the top of the headlight in the car, there's number one. There's number two back here. Number three looks like it'll be behind this panel in the inner wheel well. And number four, maybe down in there. I'm not even sure yet. I am really worried that that light is not going to fit through this hole. And if it doesn't, that means I gotta take the bull bar off to do this. And I am not looking forward to that. So fingers crossed I can get that light out of here. Okay, first things first, let me pull both tires off the front so that I can get an unobstructed view of this panel here. Okay, I'm over on the passenger side, or the left-hand side of the car, and this panel has got two 10 mil bolts holding it on the bottom, so I'll do them. Now yours might look slightly different than this, because I've got an ARB bull bar, and this panel is screwed into the back of one of the bash plates on that ARB bull bar, and this panel's been trimmed here, so I'm not quite sure what the factory one looks like, but you'll be able to work it out if you just have a look in your own wheel well. Now I'm up in the inner guard, looking in the inner guard, and that number one bolt is located right there. So if you're looking at the outside of the car, it's approximately in this position. So this little guy has got a bolt here and a clip holding it on. I'm gonna take that bolt and clip off and see whether I can lever this out a little bit to get a little bit of room here so that I can get a spanner in there. That one comes out easily enough, that's good. Okay, I got that panel off, and lo and behold, in behind it, it's a plastic panel that that panel clips onto. So we got three bolts that I identified, one, two, and three. 
that one there is actually the one that holds the headlight on. So once you get this panel peeled back, you only need to go for that one. Okay, let's go after the two easy bolts on the top side here. That one there, easy as, it's right in our face. This one here, easy as as well. Just peel up this little bit of plastic. So, three of four, done. Looks like the grill is also attached to the headlight here with a little Phillips head. So we'll take that little sucker off. Wonder how many more of these sneaky ones are around. The last one I've got to get is that guy right down there. And to do that, I've got a 600 kilometer long extension with a wobble on the end of it. So if your wobble is as sloppy as an old man's dick, this is a little trick to help stiffen it up a little bit. Just put a little bit of electrical tape around the joint. It still allows it to wobble, but gives it some rigidity. Okay, that bolt's done. Let me see if I can get it with a magnet. Ta-da! I brought my new light over here just to get an idea whether there's any more things holding this light in. And right here in the corner of the indicator is this little pointy spike. So I grabbed the light and I've actually unclipped that pointy spike out of there. But as I feared, the light is now interfering with the scrub bar. So I'm gonna undo these two bolts in the scrub bar. Hopefully that scrub bar pops out enough to allow that light to clearance. The other tricky part that I've got is this slashing here. I don't know whether I'll be able to pull that forward enough to clear the light because it starts to interfere with the bull bar here. Oh boy, I'm going in deep. There's one half of the shell. Here's the other half of the shell. Yes. That should give me enough room. Okay, where's my next roadblock? It's there somewhere. Maybe this grill is causing me a headache now. I think I might have to take this grill out of there and that's probably gonna get me there. I hope, I really do. Don't wanna take that bull bar off. Okay, I got the grill off and you gotta get these little tabs that run along the bottom of the grill all disconnected. Once you do that, however, your grill is free and clear. Now I can't take mine completely out because I've got my UHF wire running through the grill, but it's out of the road now anyway. Okay, what's that get me? Nice, sweet. I can get the light out without pulling the bull bar off. Thank your gods for that. Okay, time to disconnect the electrical connectors. Okay, that's that one. Out with our light, sweet. Okay, now to unplug the HID lights. These I got off of ePray years ago, and they've been running for years and years and years without any drama. But finally, that one obviously let go, which is the reason that I'm doing this. I don't even know whether you can get these HID mini ballasts anymore, but anyway, here's the low beam side. You know, I put these in years ago. I put electrical tape around them, and then a zip tie to hold the electrical tape from fraying. And that's worked beautifully. These headlights have been underwater many, many, many times. So I think I'll probably do the same thing with the new lights. Okay, let's see if we can squeeze in our new light without destroying the fascia of it. Got to take the plugs off the back that I've already put on because they're getting in the road. This job would be a piece of piss if you didn't have a bull bar. If you're thinking about putting new lights on and you don't have a bull bar yet, do the lights first. Okay, that's roughly sitting in place where it needs to be. How exciting is that? Now, there are four plugs off the back of these lights. So this one's easy enough, it's idiot proof. It's got a little groove on the one side of it and a groove on the receiving side of the plug. So you can't put it in wrong. Click. Now these two suckers, which are the high and the low beam, I don't think you can screw those up either because those pins are further apart than those pins. That's the close together pinned one click and that's the further apart pinned one. Sweet! And that little green sucker in the wiring harness, I'm not sure what that one does, but they did give me a jumper wire that goes from this side to the other side. All right, let's test these lights. Now I got my light sitting in situ. It's time to bolt her down. These bolts that hold the light on have a little shoulder here that helps locate it. All right, that's our light mounted in place, and that all seems pretty solid. Next, I'm gonna move on to the connectors, tape them up just like this one, 
and put a little zip tie over the end of the tape so that they don't unwind as the tape ages over time. Zip tie over the end of the electrical tape, snip them off, and done. All right, I'll do the same to this large gray plug here. Then I'll move on to the next step. I'm not exactly sure what that next step is, but I'm sure it'll become apparent as I work along. Now I'll nip up these two inner guard bolts. That bolt back in place. That guard's now back in place. Now these little clamps for the bull bar. And it looks like they're gonna clear the light just fine, which is awesome. All right, scrub bars back in place. And I got the same amount of clearance between those bolts and the headlights as I did on the original ones. It's not a lot, maybe about 10 mil, but it's enough. Even when the body moves on the body mounts, I've never had those bolts foul on the lights. And they were about the same distance as that. Got the passenger side all buttoned up. Now I'm over on the driver's side. Now you might be saying, why do I need to take this off? I need to take that off to get to the wires back there. On my aftermarket bull bar, I've got a plug that runs up to the indicator light and it's too short. I can't get enough length to hook it up onto the loom of the new headlights. So that's the reason for pulling this off. The bolt holding the headlight, one of the four bolts, that's him right there underneath that cover. Exactly the same as on the passenger side. Got this one, which is the easiest one to get to. And the last one is behind this trim piece. Okay, I'm gonna wrestle and fight this one and I'll see you guys back when I get it free. There's no special trick to getting these out. You just gotta be persistent in your wiggling. Okay, after a bit of wiggling and jiggling, voila, we got her out. Okay, got my three plugs hooked up. This light is now ready to slot into this big ugly hole. Okay, wish me luck. I think this one's gonna be a little bit tighter because of the larger battery that's sitting in here. Fingers crossed. Like I said before, there's no magic way to get this to fit. You just kinda stuff it in and do the best you can. It's funny, I used to bitch and moan in Canada when it was below zero working out in the shed and not being able to feel your fingers. And now it's 38 degrees at 6 p.m. at night. I'm sweating my ring out, wishing for that cold Canadian weather. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? There we go. That is pretty close to got it. I'm gonna put a couple of bolts in, just a few turns, just to make sure it doesn't walk away on me. And then I'll hook these plugs up. It's the following morning. I'm back at it again. Now, let me start the rest of these bolts that hold the headlight actually in place. All right, I'm gonna clean this grill up before I pop it back in the car, just because it's so bloody hard to get to behind the bull bar and the spotlights. Now that it's sitting out here flapping in the breeze, I can get to it. The wiring is now finished. I've tested all the lights. Everything looks good, so. I'll run you guys through exactly what I've got once I get this grill back in place. One thing I can say about these lights is the fit of them is exceptional. They have slotted directly into place without any modifications whatsoever. And typically my experience with these aftermarket parts is sometimes you've got to really massage them to get them into place. Like look at that bolt hole. That sucker's lined up absolutely perfectly. Okay, let's pop this panel back in situ. Okay, let's get rid of this plastic and see what these things actually look like. Very nice. And the other side. The head's awesome. No marks on them either. I can't believe I got them installed and didn't scour them up. Well, from an aesthetics point of view, I love the beast mode look. That is just bloody awesome. Gives the car a completely different personality, especially when you couple it with that bonnet scoop. When I turn the parking lights on, it goes through this boot up sequence, which is kind of cool in itself. Obviously you've got that one large parker that's shaped like a big hockey stick, and then you've got the three smaller hockey sticks that sort of bracket each of the individual headlights. Well, this is pretty cool. When you hit the indicators, the light kind of runs up that hockey stick. It almost looks like Kit from Knight Rider or something. 
that's awesome. When you're running the parkers with no headlights on and you're indicating, the side without the indication is just running your parker lights. And like the ADR compliance rules demand, the park light goes off on the indicating side. So that's pretty cool. And that's our high beam. And you can see that all three of the lights are activated. And there are our hazard lights flashing. I've got this on a strobe effect through that fast tap relay, which I mentioned a little bit earlier. You can set it to pretty much anything through that relay, but I actually like this strobe type effect. That indicator bar stays illuminated when I open the door and close the door for probably about 10 seconds or so. And that's attributed to that tap flasher relay, which I've got installed. And that video is in the 200 series maintenance and mods playlist. The other thing I like about this long delay when I lock and unlock the vehicles is that it actually gives a fair bit of luminosity at nighttime. So if you're looking for keys or you're taking some steps through some tricky ground, this actually illuminates it enough for you able to get really good visibility. Okay, those headlights are installed. Now, what would I say about the install? I was very pleasantly surprised at the fit and the finish. They slotted in there perfectly, just like the factory ones. I was very impressed with the wiring too. They wired up very easily, just plug and play. So I guess a couple of remaining questions are, what are the luminosity like on these things during nighttime driving? After all, that's why you've got headlights. And secondly, what about the longevity of these things? Now I was gonna do a video on the luminosity of these headlights. And you know what, without any direct comparison, for example, some video shot down the road, it's really pretty meaningless. What I can say about the luminosity on these, and this is compared to the HIDs, which I had in prior, is it appears to be a much more crisp and linear type light. I don't know whether you've experienced in new cars with LED lights, they've kind of got a very distinct line on how far out the light casts. And when you go over a bump or something like that, you can see that line sort of move on the horizon. That's exactly what these LEDs have. In terms of the total distance that I can see, I don't do a lot of night driving, but I would put these LEDs in front of my HIDs. And compared to the halogens, there is no comparison. Those halogens are like two brown candles. So if a direct luminosity comparison is something that you're chasing, this is probably not the video to base any decisions on. The only thing that you've got is anecdotal observations from someone like myself. In terms of longevity, one, the longevity on the plastic, which we know on the factory lights is pretty ordinary, especially this top part here that gets all sorts of crazing on it. And secondly, what happens when I take these over massive corrugations and get under bonnet deep water? And on that point of longevity, I've now had these things in the vehicle for about three months, done a couple of four wheel drive trips, haven't given me any dramas whatsoever. What I haven't had them on is massively extreme corrugations like what we saw in the Canning Stock Group, for example, nor have I had them underwater yet. And three months is a reasonably short time as well. So if I do have any failures, I'll report that back through YouTube. But at the moment, no indication of any longevity issues whatsoever. One last thing that I will say is I paid full price for these things. I'm not sponsored in any way. I picked them up off of ePray and I can't remember the exact price, but I'll flash it up on the screen so that you can see. So they're not cheap units by any stretch of the imagination. It would have been a hell of a lot cheaper for me to just replace the ballast in the one headlight and be done with it but you know what I actually really like what I've got here now it's aesthetically super pleasing to me the luminosity is better than my HIDs the only question mark now is longevity so I'm gonna wrap this headlight video up by heading into the house and having a cold beverage thanks for dropping in everyone I hope you found some value here until next time keep the shiny side up bye now